She's out in the world doing producing. She's got a whole urban flicks thing that's coming down. And tomorrow with Wanda Sykes and Mike Epps as your husband, Wanda Sykes yeah. is your sister. Yeah. It's a new show on Netflix because Netflix is a joke. It's called The Upshaws. Let me welcome the illustrious, the talented Kim Fields. <laughs> What's going on, lady? How you doing, hey, girl? Good to see you. It's great to see you. I am so proud and happy. I can't wait to tune in because I like a, a lot of television. And this, uh, from what I'm reading, is a throwback to the Norman Lear sitcoms where Black people are centered in a way that's not just ha-ha, but some drama, right. but not some trauma. Right, drama right. without the trauma. Right. I said, please, thank you. Tell yeah. me the impetus for the Upshaws. How did this happen? Well, you know, uh, I was kind of the, the last piece to this wonderful puzzle. Uh, Mike and Wanda have been friends for years, obviously, uh, on the stand-up circuit. And uh, Mike went to her and said, hey, let's meet. I want to do a show about a working class Black family in the Midwest. Uh, and, you know, their lives are messy. Uh, we want to be really, really funny, but really, really true to um, what's happening in the world right now with families and just with people. And so Regina said, uh, Wanda said, that's great. Let me go and get Regina uh, Hicks with this because she's got such a pedigree in, um, you know, comedy writing and also just real, real relevant and, and relatable characters. And uh, then uh, they went to Netflix and before they could get the pitch out good, Netflix was like, uh, yes, <laughs> we want this. Um, and then I was in LA doing a, a press tour for my Christmas movie. And they said, would you do uh, a chemistry session with Wanda and Mike and for Netflix? And I was like, what? <laughs> 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 of course I will, what? And then uh, next thing you know, there we are making magic in, uh, in Sunset Gower Studios. Now they got Jamie Foxx. Uh, I've been watching Family Reunion with uh, Maori and Loretta Devine. And, mm -hmm. But there's canned laughter in, in, mm -hmm. in that one, which is a little, to me, off-putting. The canned mm -hmm. laughter is what's, what's it, and that's supposedly filmed before a live audience. What's yes. this setup? Well, well, it is. Uh, Family Reunion is, is, is a film in front of an audience, uh, and they were kind of the first uh, kind of foray that Netflix kind of started delving into that, that kind of family comedy sitcom world, especially uh, surrounding Black families. With this one, though, um, it's, it's certainly a lot more irreverent, a lot edgier. Um, we also film in front of, uh, of a live audience. And so there is this energy, you know, to it. Um, and this has that throwback energy too of like a Norman Lear show, which is something that Mike and Wanda really wanted. Um, so you've got uh, some banter and some exchanges that feels very much like um, Fred and Aunt Esther or George, George Jefferson and uh, Florence or George Jefferson and well, really anybody. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they do have that kind, of, that kind of banter. Helen, yes, exactly. Um, and so, so you do have that, uh, that tone and that energy of that, again, that classic um, family sitcom but again, that's very fresh and relevant. You've not seen this family before, you, but you know them. They, they, they are you. You know, at some point, you're like, uh, "Do y'all have a camera in my house?" Because this feels too real. During this pandemic, how is the studio audience? And I think I'm asking more of a technical question because, like, yeah. how do you do? The, are they socially distanced? Are they zooming right. in? Like, what does this yeah. look like? Um, so. Yes, when you are, you know, dealing with uh, once we kind of turned the corner and people were um, with a lot of parameters able to engage again, re-engage, so to speak. Yes, yeah, so you had, uh, and there's another show that I direct called Miss, The Miss Pat Show. Um, and so even with that, where we had a studio audience, lots of social distancing, people wearing masks, um, they're wearing um, headphones to hear. Uh, the show and things like that, that are all, you know, sanitized. And so there's a great deal more that's going into the live studio audience uh, experience. Um, but again, you know, making sure that you capture that element is still very important. Kim, the, uh, you, you've been on television, it seems like probably like every decade of your life, like it has, have you always when, when it comes down to like the studio audience versus not having them there, is there a big difference in, in terms of what that feeling is for the actor and your performance? 
Yes, there's definitely a, a difference. Um, you know, it's almost like when you're doing theater or for a stand-up artist um, like Mike and Wanda and a lot of the comedians who have had their own scripted shows, um, you have that immediate response. Um, some people would call it instant gratification. And it's not, it's not in that negative space, I don't think. It's, it's more so uh, you hear what, what they're relating to, what they're responding to. And it's an immediate um, interaction. It's an immediate exchange between the artist and the audience that you can really gauge right then and there in the moment. Um, and so when you don't have that studio audience, I mean, you kind of know what's funny and crews are great because crews will certainly laugh or not and to let you know nah, you might want to give that one another take um but uh, it definitely can inform you know and then when i'm directing again to be able to um let the actors know okay here hold for the laughs because you know you're gonna get a, a laugh here or that's funny um and even if you're doing the type of comedy where there may not be a studio audience or a laugh track but it's still a comedy you still need to allow for those moments as well, but it does mm -hmm. definitely inform, you know, the the interaction. What kind of characters are you looking for Wait, hold, now? Hold. I mean, I'm sorry, Karen. I mean it. That's all right. Go ahead. <laughs> what kind so of characters engaging, are you looking Karen. for? He just couldn't you wait. Are. He just had to I jump on. Go ahead, in. Drew. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like, I, I'm curious. Like, what kind of characters are you looking for now? Like, I, we we hadn't we a lot of people didn't know that black kids went to went to boarding school before <laughs> before Cootie rolled <laughs> well, in on on the roller skates, right. right? A lot of people didn't really didn't really recognize you know the black single life living in the city um, until Living Single came along. Like, what what kind of what kind of roles are you looking at now to like to tell new stories? Honestly, just whatever feels like uncharted waters. Um, and so for me, if, if, if I feel like it's a character I've not played, if it's um, a genre that I've not been in, um, and for example, with the Upshaws, God knows I wasn't checking for another comedy um, and wanting, wanting to do more drama, wanting, again, the mandate for me and my team is what haven't we done? And yet when I read the script, uh, I realized that again, the tone, the type of dialogue that I was engaging in was not at all like a character that I had played before and truly felt like a deep dive into uncharted waters. And that's that's what it's really about for me as, as an actor, as a director, as a producer, as an entrepreneur, you know, what haven't we done? Um, we've got a, a wonderful coffee-based face and body scrub from my coffee line, Signature Blends by KF, because again, it's like, okay, how do we keep challenging ourselves? How do we keep making this life adventurous and this journey full of excitement? KF, uh, that would be Kim Fields. Uh, the Upshaw start <laughs> yes. uh, releases tomorrow on Netflix on her actual birthday, which I think is really, did they plan that? If they did, I'm so grateful. I don't know. Knowing Netflix, because they're so amazing to to work with and for, they they probably, you know, they probably were up to a little something, something. Yeah.